So I'm turning again to John 14. We began this uh, uh, last week when we were talking about this extended period where Jesus is preparing the disciples for the fact that he wouldn't always be with them. So I begin by reading seven interesting verses which come from words of Jesus, uh, chapter 14 of John, 15 through to 21. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I'll not leave you as orphans. I'll come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you'll realize that I'm in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. I suppose there's a link here between this passage and uh, the sports world we talked about a moment or two ago. And that's really, you've got to be fully focused if you're really going to do the thing that's right. And Jesus here is saying, we've got to be fully focused upon him. Loving and keeping his commands are in direct relationship with each other. You can't say you follow Jesus and then not follow his commands. The two are so intricately linked together. Now, the Jewish people kept their little boxes by their doors, on the, the lintels of the doors as you went in. They wore the law in leather boxes on their foreheads. By keeping fully focused on the law, it was important to them. For us, followers of Jesus, we need to be, be fully focused on him, fully engaged in God's way for our lives. I think this helps us to understand that we need to be ready. Jesus is preparing these disciples. He's not always going to be with them, but there will be the gift of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus gives, and that will make such a difference. And in fact, when you reach this point in John's Gospel, chapter 14 and 16, they're massive chapters on the work of the Holy Spirit. John's word for the Holy Spirit is parakletos, which is translated comforter, counsellor, advocate or friends, somebody who comes alongside us. Gosh, don't we need that? In whatever Christian work that we're doing, whatever we're trying to do in helping people, we need to be assured that God it is who comes alongside us and makes such a difference. That is the advocate, the one who speaks up for us. I like that. We talk about advocate in court circles, but God speaks up for us. His Holy Spirit lives within us. And so these disciples, when they began to think, what is it going to mean? We, we won't always have him here. We won't be able to listen to his teaching in quite the way we used to. We won't be able to touch him anymore in quite the way we did. We won't be able to see him touching the outcast, the leper, the people who are marginalized. Oh, but gosh, what Jesus is really saying, you will know because he will live in you and he will be the one that is going to be your advocate and friend. And I think really it must have been enormously encouraging, if a bit frightening, for those first disciples to begin to grasp what it was to live without him. Um, they, they, they let him down, yes, it's true. There were times in which the disciples struggled with what it meant to follow, but you know, they got so close to him and they started to understand a little bit of what it would mean. And then you have to put that into the context that when the night came, many of them fled and deserted him because they're going to need the Holy Spirit. I often remind people, you know, even after resurrection, they still met behind locked doors. You know, it was only when the Spirit of God was breathed upon them and the Pentecost experience of Acts 2 became their experience that they were able to go into all the world to do what it says in the Great Commission, preach the gospel baptize, teach, do all those things that really are the gospel things, only because of the Holy Spirit. 
And as we talked a little earlier with somebody who's working alongside people with a particular challenge of drugs, the truth is you can't do this on your own. And that's why a Christian take on it is so very, very important to understand that there is a power, there is a, a, a support, a strength, there is a friend who can meet people at their point of need. So nobody, and we say this many times at Wesley Mission to people in, in a million and one different situations, nobody is out of the reach and care of God and nobody's esteem can ever be destroyed if we have the willingness to open our lives up to his way and his purpose. And so that this truth in, in John 14 is something all of us want to take to heart and understand as real for our lives today. So very, very important. Maybe you need to hear that today. Maybe you need to feel a sense of God's presence and God's power reaching out to you in and through the Holy Spirit. <laughs>